Hi, I'm Dr. Amy, physical therapist and clinical advisory board member here at PBOV. And this is the foundational pelvic floor strengthening series. In this first workout, we're really just gonna talk about why it's so important, how to properly activate your core and isolate your pelvic floor working with your breath. You may have heard some buzz about the importance of the pelvic floor, but if you're not quite sure why it matters so much or even where it is, then this series is for you. In this episode, we'll discuss why the pelvic floor is so essential. And in the following episodes, you'll learn strengthening exercises specifically for the pelvic floor that you can do at home. So let's get started. What is the pelvic floor? Why is it so important? And what does it do? Well, the pelvic floor is a group of muscle at the bottom of your pelvis. And if you can see on my model here, everything that you see in red is your pelvic floor. Uh, it's skeletal muscle, which just means that it has the same properties as every other muscle in your body, like your quad or your hamstring or your bicep. So the pelvic floor can get tight, it can get weak, you can stretch it and you can strengthen it just like any other, other muscle in your body. The reason why it's important is because it serves uh, more than one function. So the first and probably most important function is uh, supporting your pelvic organs and the function of your pelvic organs. So inside the pelvis you have your bladder, your uterus, and your rectum. And they really sit right into this space here and right on top of these muscles. The muscles have to function to maintain uh, continence, which is both bowel and bladder continence. And it's important to have not just strength here, but also the ability to contract and relax it at will so that you can use these muscles when you need them. The other really important function of this muscle group is that it's part of your core. Um, and I know you've probably all heard the term core, but really if you think about what the core is, it's imagine a barrel and the bottom of the barrel is down here at the bottom of the pelvis and the top is right at the top of your rib cage. Um, and so the front of the barrel is your abdominal muscles and the back is your deep back muscles. The top of the barrel is your diaphragm and then the bottom of the barrel is your pelvic floor. So all four of those structures need to function together to create stability in the skeletal system, specifically in the spine and the pelvis. When we have a strong core, it actually helps to allow your body to move freer without stressing the, the joints of the spine and pelvis. This is why this muscle group is so important, not just by itself, but also as part of the core. So let's talk about how to properly engage our pelvic floor. So for this, I'm gonna have our trainer, Antonietta from PVOV. <laughs> and she's gonna demonstrate a couple strategies on how to properly engage your pelvic floor and also why breathing is so important with using your pelvic floor. So let's talk about just isolating the pelvic floor. So we need to be able to do that on its own. It, it does work as a system with other muscles, but to be able to use your pelvic floor on its own is important because we don't want it to always rely on, on its neighboring muscles. We want it to be able to independently function for things such as continence, and then also, of course, proper core engagement. We're gonna talk a little bit about how the breath and the pelvic floor work together. So, Antonietta, I want you to take a deep abdominal or diaphragmatic breath. And as you see, as she breathes in, the belly comes up and rises into her fingertips. And as she exhales, it falls back down into a neutral position. And she's just gonna do a few breaths here. And if you can imagine the diaphragm, which is right under your rib cage, is basically flattening and lowering into your belly. And when that happens, the belly rises, the abdominals expand, and the pelvic floor actually reflexively releases a bit. So it almost acts as a pistoning where the muscles deepen and relax as the diaphragm comes down. Alternatively, as she exhales, the diaphragm comes back up and the pelvic floor follows. This is a really important strategy to understand 
because when we activate the core, we want to do it while we exhale. And when we do that, it helps us to get not just the uh, proper activation, but it helps to kind of close the pressure system in the core and create stability in the pelvis and the spine. When we do this, it allows our pelvic floor to strengthen, which will help with continence, pelvic stability, um, and recovery from childbirth. Um, so whether you had a vaginal delivery or a C-section, you really need to focus on um, getting back in touch with these muscles. They have changed rapidly overnight uh, after, after giving birth and after having carried all that weight in your pelvis. So let's talk about how to actually activate the pelvic floor. I'm gonna have Antonietta demonstrate. So lying on your back, we already talked about how to breathe and how to diaphragmatically breathe and open as the belly rises and lowers and just the natural movement of what's happening there. So I'm just gonna review that one more time. You're gonna go ahead and inhale and you're imagining the pelvic floor opening and the diaphragm coming down and then on the exhale, it kind of follows back up. Now, this next rep, I want you to contract the pelvic floor. So what you're gonna do, pretend like your pelvic floor is a bowl and you're trying to make the bowl a little bit more shallow. So you're closing all those openings in the pelvis as if to stop the flow of urine, close vaginally, contract rectally, and kind of flex or lift the tailbone up towards your head. So you're imagining all of those things happening as your pelvic floor contracts and lifts up towards your head. So Antonietta, I want you to take a deep inhale and then on the exhale, think about closing those openings and lifting up towards your head as if to shallow the bowl, right? And then on the inhale, you're gonna let go and just let that bowl open and deepen. So you're imagining that as almost an elevator. So at rest, you're about on the first floor. When you kegel or contract your pelvic floor, you're gonna lift to the one, two, three level on the elevator. And then as you inhale, you're releasing down to the basement. And that is really the full range of motion of the pelvic floor. So once you've practiced that a few times, we can start adding the rest of the core and how we actually get that to be involved on top of the pelvic floor. This next rep, I want you to take a nice deep inhale, and then as you exhale, you're gonna pull that belly button towards the spine while you're thinking about lifting that elevator. And then relax on the inhale and let the belly rise. And then on the exhale, the pelvic floor is coming up as your diaphragm comes up and your belly comes in. So it's a little bit of a contraction of the abdominals, but it's not a flexion. You'll notice that she's maintaining neutral spine. She's keeping a nice steady breath. Um, the other important thing to know when you're doing core and pelvic floor activation is you always wanna move your breath and you wanna work or do that activation while you exhale because that uses your body's natural system to activate and to create a closed pressure system as I mentioned before. So as you can see, Antonietta, she is exhaling, pulling that belly in and that pelvic floor is coming up. Even though you can't see it, you're feeling that closing and that lifting up towards her head. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of this specific activation um, throughout the rest of the series. So if you're ready to get started with pelvic floor strengthening, stay tuned for the next few episodes.